I wanted to uh, do your the, your code, but um, I it's, hadn't. It's really Max's code mostly. Okay. <clears throat> I just yeah. combined them all into one script. I changed some stuff and I'll talk a little bit about some of those things that I changed, but okay. like I said yesterday, I tried to change a whole bunch. I tried to update it to where it was like all tidy models and, or like, you know, recipe, modern, more, more modern than carrot. Okay. And uh, there's some stuff that's not in tidy models yet. Okay. Um, but like data. the, R, but the, the data. data. Yeah, that's from... fine. They are from the the computing part of the book, is it? Yeah, um, it's all from Max's example. Yeah. Ah, okay. I didn't change that. I I didn't have time to. I I I tried to do some of the code on the data set that you had presented. Um, and then I just was like, I have to focus on. <laughs> I kept trying to. I kept looking and looking and looking and looking. I spent hours this week on it. Uh trying to make a quicker, better, faster, whatever version of it so that it was it was it was all there and that was a mistake. I should have just tried to get the gist of it and I didn't. I was okay. trying to do too much. Well, trying to do too much. So I'm um, um, I have this uh, uh, GitHub repository for the, the book club and inside I put the uh, computing part as a secondary repository. Okay. And so if I need a, a file, um, I will be able to, to find it when I'm inside the book club project. Did you do the same? No, I didn't. Not yet anyway. Um, the script is, like I said, it's 90% max's stuff and then a little bit of my stuff and a bunch of notes a bunch of comments to say what i'm doing and why uh although i have to admit towards the end i'm definitely going to need some feedback input from the rest of the group on like what the hell's going on because when he puts together there's a, a section in uh 2.4 where he puts together uh and does uh what is it um the feature elimination part um on hundreds of models and um and it's kind of like i don't quite understand what what all's going on there but uh hopefully we can talk about it a little bit uh more, more than a little bit hopefully quite a bit yeah. but yeah the the code that i sent i mean we can uh maybe i can put it as a secondary repository or something like that I, I also didn't get very far in the notes i tried to make some notes but i found myself being distracted by the trying to make pretty notes and just needed to be able to explain the chapter to the rest of the group so we'll see how good that goes but like i said in the last book club i'm not a statistician i just play one on tv <laughs> okay so i go to the uh, to, to grab the data for this example i go to the uh, computing uh, part okay where's the computing part <clears throat> for the stats feature engineering uh, yeah and so it has to be in that folder with those r data files the the okay. R data files for stroke and interactions. Okay. Okay. So you need those two along with um, in the in the structure. So what I did was I put this script in the same folder with all the other chapter two resources. Mm -hmm. And like I said, 90% of this, well, it might be a little less than that, but 90% of this is just Max's code with a bunch of comments and some other things in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and maybe share my screen. I don't. How long do you want to wait for folks before we get started? Uh, usually five past, uh, but how many okay. are? So we, we, four. we can wait like a couple of minutes more to see if okay. someone has to No on. problem. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm trying to, to put this, um, 
access uh, repository inside the book club repository as a separate um, uh, project because I already did it, but then I'll clean up everything. So I trash it away, I fork the repo. So I've got, I've still got it in GitHub, but then I need to do it again. And um, I wish I was better with Git and could help, but I'm, I'm not that good. I'm, I'm practicing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I did. Did you post something the other day? It was like this is your first package or something, and you put it on GitHub. Yeah. Which is awesome. Good job on that. But that that that's yeah. that, that's that, amazing. That, 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 that was yeah. really interesting. Yeah. The other other frogs. Yeah. A design is to expand the data set, finding other things to. Uh, oh, like was it for this club? Should I have used the frog data set? Ooh, that's I a classification, know. mostly classification <clears throat> problem. I don't know. Yeah, definitely we can do some featuring. They're, they're all um, uh, nominal predictors. Oh, except, okay. Uh, yeah, because uh, this one has a mix of nominal and binary. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, I'm practicing uh, doing a package. Uh, then um, I have a couple of functions that I like to to add because I made them uh, I make um, all the time and like comp composing things that I use most frequently. There's a couple of them. I'm sure most probably they they are already being done because you know it's an immense world. Uh, so if you don't, it can happen that you don't know something uh, and uh, maybe. It's very likely that someone else has already did it, but uh, you know, um, you can't do. You can't practice if you, even on stuff that already exists. Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah, where all my code comes fine. from: Stack Overflow and GitHub. Right. Yeah. Not not really, but mostly. Yeah, yeah. I need to need to get my access to that AI that you start typing and it writes it for you. That's what I need. <laughs> Maybe it would have filled in some of these mental gaps that I had when, when I was going through this. That, that's the GitHub uh, compiler, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Although I. Uh, but the, but, I the, freebie, but, but the freebie ended, so now you have to pay. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Ten dollars a month. So I'm still, you know, missed opportunity. I, missed opportunity. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm still wondering if, if you know, if it's, if it's a good investment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're coding all day, you know, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it time is up because otherwise we 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 haven't got time. So <laughs> sure. is your oh, we should start. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll do the little clapboard for John. Um, so today, uh, hi, I'm Brandon again. Um, I'm doing the chapter two this week. Uh, I figured I'd start with an early chapter that way I would uh, I maybe I have a higher chance of understanding what I'm doing. Um, like I said, uh, I have a, uh, I've self-taught most of the statistical stuff that, that I learned. I did a little bit in grad school, but it's been forever and it was all taught in SAS. So I have no idea how that translates. Uh, and it was a long time ago now too. So um, <clears throat> effectively, uh, um, chapter two is about taking a, an example data set that they found that they have on uh, a, a risk of stroke and they have a bunch of image analysis traits, which are which are derived from uh, CT scans of arterial walls, um, and uh, which is something very familiar to me. I work in plants, but we do a lot of this sort of like uh, image analysis work uh, on on structures and, and organs and things like that in plants, of course. But uh, uh, but then it also has like uh, risk factors like smoking and age and gender and those sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> actually sex not gender um so like um they they what i found really interesting uh let, let's step back for a second the the chapters split up into a couple of sections where they talk about splitting the data um i was really disappointed in this one i'll explain why in a minute and then they talk about some pre-processing steps in terms of like transforming the data into something that is more suitable for certain types of models We'll talk about that as well. And then there's like exploration where you start to explore like, you know, what is the data set and how, how do each of the variables 
uh, correlate to the outcome variable, which in this case is whether or not the person had a stroke. And then you start you start doing interaction effects and those sorts of things in, in part four. Uh, and then there's some other considerations and the computing part is uh, a link to the GitHub repo. Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'll go over here where where I put the, I put the script that I'm going to kind of go through today in uh, in the, uh, uh, the the Slack channel. Um, I'll make this a little bit bigger for now. But effectively, effectively, you have the image analysis traits, which are which are these things here, and and most of these are like you know diameter of this, volume of that, and those sorts of things, related to the uh, the CT scan of the arterial walls. And then you have your risk uh, predictors, which are you know age, sex, smoking history, whether or not they've had some of these problems in the past or in their familial past. Um, what I found really frustrating getting into the the first part, which is about splitting is that they the, the the data set actually came pre-split um i thought this would be a great opportunity for them to like introduce the the split functions uh that are in tidy modelings or 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 even maybe carrot i'm sure they have them as well um so uh what 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 this this code here does is it does the uh it does the the table that you see in the in the thing and it says well okay uh, we've got 44 no in our training and 45 yes in our training in terms of the stroke counts and those sorts of things. But so what I did was I went ahead and so I know how to do this, which is great. Um, I actually put the two data sets together. They have test and they have training. I put them back together with bind rows. And then I did the the actual tidy modeling way of, uh, of, of taking the initial split. So uh, what you do is you do all stroke, which is with the combination of the two data sets. I had to set the proportion to 0.71, which is very specific, but it, it effectively gives you the same exact split as what the what they did before. And the strata is stroke. And what that does is it fixes the ratios of those things, uh, yes and no, so that you end up with uh, the proper uh, amounts of things in, in training and testing. Um, and so if, if, you, if you do all this and then you and then you run the same the same code, you get pretty much exactly the same distribution of things. I will say that because this is a uh, random thing, uh, the rows are probably not exactly the same. Um, uh, so, but I used this in some code further down that I did, trying to do some tidy modeling sort of things to emulate what they were doing with the, the, the modeling later. Uh, so I used my code to do that. So the, the fact that they're not exactly the same kind of makes a bit of sense. But like I said, I think it was a missed opportunity here to actually showcase how to do the splitting. Um, I guess I guess this book is more, uh, the code is kind of hidden in the background. I feel like in tidy modelings, maybe that stuff was a little bit in the foreground. Uh, maybe I should have uh, taken this, this Brandon, one first. Uh, Brandon, just a comment. Okay, uh, that that's great that you know you did the the initial split because that was my idea. You know when I first you know start reading, I said, well, why don't we combine the data set and then you know do the splitting instead of you know get, get, getting those those train and test sets already uh, done. Uh, one thing that I would add in the code, you know, to make it more reproducible, is to set a seed number. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So before the initial split, you can set set that seed any number, and then you know you'll get the same the same rows, okay, yeah. for splitting and everything. Yeah, and they do that. A, they do that a lot throughout the code. There's a lot of set seeds, right. uh, especially at the bottom. Here, six three 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 one. That's what okay. that one's used. That one's used a lot. But I know what you mean. Yeah, I didn't set one. Um, yeah, but if if you set it, then you know. Every time you run the code, you'll get the same, the, the, yeah. the, the same, uh, you know, uh, row uh -huh. assignment to the train and the test. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, that's it's a it's a good idea um, for sure to do the yeah get the same exact training and, and testing set so that right. when you all run the code, you get the same outputs that I do. Yeah, totally. exactly. So for reproducible, uh, you know, aspect is a is a good practice. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, for for pre-processing, um, um, well, for for one of the things, the next step is kind of like um, um, to to actually look at the data um, and try and understand it. And I thought there was a little bit skipped over here too, in terms of like uh, actually taking like 
you, we're jumping straight into some modeling uh, effectively. And it's like, well, we do we understand what all of the variables look like and those sorts of things. So I thought I, I th I'd throw in a couple of uh, like basic ways to do that. So like um, this is a, a, a deep players glimpse, which just it's not going to tell you like statistics on anything or anything like that, but it will uh, tell you the type of vector that that is embedded in the in the table and also like its name and kind of a rough look at what those values look like. Um, I haven't used this as much as I should, but uh, SkimR is one of the one of the best packages for doing this. Uh, it's from the R Open Sci group. Um, I may have made my my stuff too big. But it, what's really good about this is that it gives you the number of missing values. Uh, tells you if they're complete or not, what percentage they're complete. Gives you the 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 real rough statistics of it, and also these little uh, these little histograms that show the distribution of things. And I think that's one of the one of the best ways to kind of start out looking at a data set. I don't follow this rule myself all the way, always either. I, I recently analyzed a data set last week. I was in such a rush. I didn't step back and do this, and I wish I had because uh, it caused some pain down the road that I, I would have realized going in if I had just done it. Um, the important part here is that you know the the there are two there are two things that can mess up certain types of models and which types of models. Maybe you all can help me uh, know understand which ones those are. But there there are models that really don't like missing values. Uh, PCA is actually one of those models. If you have missing values, it likes to just get rid of those observations, which is not always appropriate or or, or useful. Um, there, are, I'm sure there are many others. Uh, also but also the, the go the, ahead. The regression, the regression models, uh, yeah. they don't like uh, missing missing variables. Linear, logistic, you know, all those traditional. Um, and and then and then the uh, the other thing is too is the certain models don't like uh, non-normal distributions of the data. And we have lots of non-normal distributions. The most normal distributed looking sort of data is probably this max uh, max volume, um, maybe a, maybe this one here, wall volume, and some other things. But most of these variables, I mean, the 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 risk traits down here at the bottom, you can see they're binary. They're very one and zero. Um, and some of these others are very very left or right skewed. Um, and and effectively, one of the things that they're talking about with with this part of the chapter is kind of taking a look at these things and saying, well, okay, we need to we need to fix this. Uh, and they're using a uh, uh, Yale Johnson transformation. I don't really know how that works very well, but uh, but effectively, you get out something that is much more normal shaped than than your original inputs. And you can use this transformation or the, the box Cox transformation to give you these on all of your data set in a fairly, uh, it seems like the recommendation is to just do it on all of your variables. Maybe that's not right, but uh, that was my interpretation, at least for this chapter was to just, just blanket do this Yale Johnson transformation on all of your variables. You see that in the, in the final script in section 2.4, uh, everything just gets, uh, just gets pancaked together. Um, so that's this figure here that we just looked at there. Um, so the next thing is to kind of understand, uh, yeah. uh, if you have a lot of traits that uh, are like, go ahead. Can you see? Federica? Uh, no, just stuck uh, for a second. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Yep. Mm. Can you just zoom uh, zoom it a bit uh, because I'm, uh, it's like the code it's very oh is it really small tiny yeah sorry it looks huge on my screen yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh I know. okay it's fine. Is it readable now, Federico, or no? Okay, that that that's strange. Yeah, yeah, it's it's readable. It's readable. But I, um, uh, um, for, for me, it it would be uh, even one more, one more plus. Yeah. Okay. But I, I don't know now. Now you cannot see it. Maybe, maybe. I I 
I took a screenshot, so then I, I show you how <laughs> you can see on YouTube then. Um, oh, and sorry. Now, yeah. now it's visible. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, okay. it's it's strange because it's like half of my screen, but uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, the next part is uh, they they do this uh, they do this uh, collinearity check where they're looking at related variables, correlated variables. So they they put together a pretty simple recipe stroke by all of the data using the training set, and then they put uh, they're they're centering and scaling and doing the Yeo Johnson on only the imaging traits. These are the numeric traits, which is why you can you do these steps on those particular traits. Um, Prep just kind of puts everything, wraps it up together. And I think it actually pre-processes things and bake. I he used juice a lot. And I uh, used juice and then it it said, hey, we're superseding juice with bake. Um, but when you use bake, you have to have new data equals null, which is a little bit wordier than juice, but I thought at least I'd put it in here in case uh, that sort of thing. So so you know you, you that essentially runs these runs all of these things and outputs that data set that's been centered scaled and corrected for uh normality uh and then they're taking away the uh all the traits that are like predictors uh in terms of like uh the risks so the age the sex and and smoking history and those sorts of things and then whether or not you had a stroke and all that and then they run a correlation matrix and they get this out um they they do this later, so I this this code is kind of repeated a little bit later. But I, what I did was I said, well, there's a they use a, a, a in the recipes package of step core, where you can take all of your predictors that make it this far, and uh, yeah. run a, and 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 shrink this down to where you get rid of things that are that are that are correlated highly. Um, and so I did that as well, and I ran mm -hmm. I ran this. And you get a much different, uh, a much different matrix, much smaller one, because you see here he's highlighted in the book. There's there's red boxes around things that are really highly correlated, and he's like, well, these are probably you know, the model. Some models are going to struggle with that. You shouldn't really put those in. Although we look at that later, and uh, that's not always really true. Uh, sometimes it it helps to have uh, all your variables or some of your variables. So I, I ran this correlation matrix by by getting rid of those that are correlated at, at 0.75. Um, and you'll see that again in the code later when we're running some further models where we're filtering out things that are that are the same. And you can see that this correlation matrix is much more simple and there's a lot less uh, correlation because we got rid of it. And it filters down uh, the data set in, in terms of predictors that uh, I don't know how it picks which one goes forward though because what it does is says oh these two are really highly correlated i'm picking one and then it goes it go, that goes forward maybe it's just the first one alphabetically or something like that um but yeah so i i had i added that little step uh and i said but we're not doing that yet chapter three is is really intended to show the methodology for uh culling the data set when you have uh variables that are correlated or or other ways of uh of, of Calling the data set. Okay. So this uh, there's there's a lot of words in this part, and there's not very many, uh, um, and there's a lot of code actually too, um, but there's not a whole lot of. Um, um, uh, like this is this is like it, and there's a huge amount of code. Um, oh, actually, they started to do. Maybe I missed a part down at the bottom. Yeah, I missed some stuff. So they're they're in this part of the chapter. They're they're starting to run some of these models, and they're saying, well, okay, we're going. They're going to uh, compare compare um, uh, their model to the null model, which is just an intercept of one. Um, and I made uh, so this is their their version of the model where they they're using caret functions for most of this, which mm -hmm. again I was trying to convert everything to tidy models and failed miserably because um, there's some stuff in caret that I don't think is quite there yet in tidy models. So mm -hmm. uh, especially the uh, RFP, the what is it called? Um, 
feature uh, re recursive feature elimination function. So uh, they create a null a null uh, matrix and or it's a data frame here, but uh, but yeah, you've got intercept of one, and then that's your model. Uh, that's the they input data for your for your null model, and then what they do is they're they're doing every single variable by stroke, and then checking the the ability of the model to predict better than the null model. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you end up with a a uh, a table that looks like this. Um, here, I'll make that bigger for Federica. <laughs> um, and hopefully you can read that. Um, but what it does is it says, well, okay, what's the improvement over the null model? Is it significant or not? What's the ROC? Um, and and this is done by a uh, this uh, compare models one way function that there's a two way function as well. I think it's some other things that allow you to compare models. Uh, it's a, I think it's a caret function. Um, and and so I also I was like this is the part I got stuck on because I was like oh I really want to do this in tidy models and all that sort of stuff so I had to find like the null how to how to so I did uh, fivefold cross validation or tenfold cross validation with five resamples um, and got uh, a, a fold object and then I created a class a null model and Excuse put it me. in a work sorry Excuse me. But sure. why don't did can can't you add just uh, um, like one in the recipe? So you do the response and um I I this took in, this in this the recipe, part that this code, part yeah? took a this part took a long time. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I think in tidy models, the null model, this is all you have to define for it. You set the mode and the engine is parsnip. It's not GLM, LM, uh, Ranger or anything, you know, it's none of those other things. It's just parsnip. And I created a workflow set because what I wanted to do was kind of bind it to the other models. So I did a, I have an, a logistic regression model using hopefully similar enough things to what they did. Um, I don't know what penalty, I know roughly what penalty and mixture are, but I don't really know how to use it in this context. And then I created a bunch of formulae, each individual, uh, each individual predictor by stroke, just like they did pretty much. Uh, and then created a work, a workflow set that, in, that includes the null model and all of these individual models. So mm -hmm. you see, so you see, there's the null model, and then there's all these other ones. Um, and then I used some of the tidy model functions to like kind of pull all the metrics together. And the the most interesting thing is kind of like is kind of this this plot, if I can find it. And what it does is it it plots the uh, the ROC AUC as a so each individual sample and cross validation is a is a value that gives you an ROC number and then you can see the distribution of that. So the null model was was obviously doesn't have variation so it doesn't really change from 0.5. But you can see mm -hmm. those variables that really kind of uh, have more of an impact on the quality of the uh, the predictive power of the model on the left and those that are somehow worse at predicting the 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 thing than the null model. Um, which I, I found really interesting because it because because when I did this it was like uh, some of the variables that Max and and uh, was it Kiel start talking about are um, uh, aren't they don't they don't really agree with this so I, obviously there's different ways to do modeling and other things so uh, like I think uh, 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 sex was like really really high up here in in some of their outputs and it's like really far down on some of mine. But you, but you know, overall, what you can see is that the uh, the image analysis traits that come out of the of the scans are are pretty heavy hitters in terms of predictive power, and some of these uh, uh, risk predictors like sex, age, and so on, history, are are less meaningful to the to the model overall. And it that sort of stuff proves out in in some of the things that they did. So that's what I spent all of like Tuesday and Monday on, which is not really useful <laughs> in the <laughs> end it makes a pretty picture but uh but this is not the way that they well, uh 
it's uh, not the Brandon, way that they evaluated things. Uh, yeah, Brandon, I, I'm curious if if you select, you know, those features that supposedly are better, you know, are, are more predictive than the null. I wonder if if you run a model, let's say logistic regression model, what kind of, you know, uh, you know, what kind of output metrics, you know, you will get compared to what Max and, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I, I remember the other name of the guy, Kajol, Kajol or something. Uh, I think it's Kel, K-J-E-L-L, -E -L -L, but, but I, I'm yeah. not sure either. Um, and and it, it just reminds me, for example, we're going to see that there are different algorithm, algorithms to do feature selection. You know, there, there's no one magic you know, uh, algorithm that is going to give you, okay, these are the features that we're going to use and that's it. So usually what they, uh, Max was talking about this about uh, a couple of months ago, okay, on a meetup. And one of the tidy models package that he uh, created, you know, with a team was called workflow sets, okay? And in that one, you get different recipes Mm -hmm. and different modeling so you get every combination uh -huh. possible yeah, of different put... recipes and different models mm -hmm. and then you start seeing okay this is the model with this recipe that is really uh giving us the best you know the best metric okay and not necessarily accuracy will be the best metric it can it can you know can do precision recall and all that so uh you know it require it requires experimentation and that's the that's the beauty of, of this right you know, because it's nothing is set, you know, until you do this experimentation and you get, you know, you convince yourself, okay, this is the path that we should be, you know, we should be going. So yeah. that, that, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm using, I'm using workflow sets to, uh, to yep. run all these models at the same time, but they're, uh, they're not, they're only different in the fact that one is a null model and the other ones are stroke by one mm -hmm. of the predictors yeah. um you're absolutely right i, I mean when we did the with federica uh, uh when we did the T tidy models book we used workflow sets at the end kind of one of the last things that we did was uh you put all these different types of models xg boost and uh, yeah. ranger uh, forest models and random forest models and and linear simple linear models that have the the predictors uh you know um uh, I guess feature eliminated already um, through through like brute you know like people knowing how useful that data is or isn't and right. making the selections. Uh, what is that called? The simple term is like uh, uh, supervised. I guess you know like you're you're supervising mm -hmm. the elimination of those things, and uh, and then you ran them all at once. And then there's tools in tidy models to compare those models pick the best one for RMSC, for rock, depending on what you're, what you're trying to do. Correct. Yeah. And that's probably, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a really, that was one of the best parts about the tidy, tidy modeling uh, book and the, and the packages that I, I found. Cause it was just like, sometimes you just want to want to run a ton of models just to see which ones are, are going to stand out. Exactly. Just to make sure that you're picking, you know, the, the best ones. Yeah. You know, according to and your, it was, and then, and then it was always XG boost for some damn reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let, let me tell you, sometimes, you know, this traditional models could surprise you. Okay. Because uh, I remember in a, pro, in a project that, that I was working last year, uh, one of the models that really, really good. In fact, you know, it top XG boost at that time was ordinal regression, okay? Which is a logistic regression, but with an ordinal, you know, variable as a response. Okay. And it did very well, okay? The, the, the one that really topped it was a light GBM, okay? Which is, you know, a, a, a very complex algorithm that is very flexible. But uh, this, the, you know, if, if you carefully select those features, you transform them, you know, you work with them, you can get very good results with traditional uh, models. Okay, because you are fitting fitting the assumptions of that model with the feature engineering. I think the flexibility of those models was was actually one of the key features that I observed about XGBoost because it was just like it didn't matter because XGBoost like PCA and all those things you had to uh, you had to like impute and scale and center and everything else and XGBoost was like here's my data. <laughs> 
it was kind of nice, but uh, there's a lot going on under the hood that I, I certainly don't quite understand, at least as a, as of today. Uh, but, but anyway, I thought this was, so I spent way too much time on this, but I wanted to show you because I, I spent too much time on it and I wanted to have some output from it. But I think it, I think this is sort of maybe where we will get to towards the end of this book. I think I think part of my problem was that I was trying to skip ahead too much and not just explain what was what we were trying to accomplish here, because I think that's the goal of this chapter is to just kind of just explain the process. Not to get into the weeds too much, because a lot of the weeds are quite hidden behind in this code. But uh, but yeah, so like uh, they did, they did these, they did these uh, predictions. This this is him explaining their 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 for loop essentially because it, it literally is a for loop, which is totally fine. Um, to go through each of the uh, each of the predictors, one predictor at a time, and have a model compare it to the null model, and then try and understand what the what the uh, what the value is, the the difference between those models. And then I, I did something kind of similar, but not, not I didn't compare the null model to the other models directly. I just said, well, how does the null model look like compared to these other ones? So uh, if we go back down to his code again, um, we start to, uh, he starts to pull out some, some, some of the things uh, looking at, like here he's looking at uh, um, the, the the associations with those things uh, with the visual with the with the image analysis traits from the thing. So let's just get down to the figure. Um, oh, did it not work? Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so th this plot, I had a hard time understanding because I think again he's he's comparing the null model or something about the null model or or two. He's comparing two models here, and this, this is where uh I, i'm i'm a little i'm a little confused on what we're actually looking at here so if you have if you have some help uh i would appreciate it in this in this plot um we've got yes and no across the bottom we've got individual uh predictors and we've got um the p-value the significance value of the model and they're ordered by the significance so I mean, I guess I guess it's kind of like my graph, maybe a little bit, where they're like these are the predictors that are high up on the on the predictability power, and the ones that are kind of more towards the bottom, like volume and vol prop. Um, the p value is is right. pretty much nothing, and so th those variables don't matter as much. They don't give you any predictive power. Is it? it what I can what, what I can say is that you know usually for inferential statistics you know using uh, using the p-value for example what it what it does really it gives you uh, you know it, it gives you information in terms if that uh, you know what you're measuring if what you're measuring is significantly different or not okay so for example. Let's say that you have two groups, right? You have two, two groups of data, two groups of data. And you want to know if the mean of that of those two groups is equal to zero. In other words, there's no difference in mean. So you do your, you know, your t-test, right? And then you get a p-value. If your p-value usually is 0 0.05, that's the threshold. If it's less than 0 0.05, that means that the difference between those means, for example, of those two groups. Are significantly different. Okay, in other words, they're not zero. The, the difference is not is not zero. So they're significantly different. So if we translate this, you know, to this a problem, whatever you are trying to to measure, if you get a, a, a very small p value, what it means is that there's a significantly difference. In other words, that difference won't reach zero. There's a, there's a very low probability that that difference will be zero. In other words, that there will be no difference. So, so the confidence interval doesn't overlap zero. Is that correct? Okay. That, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, uh, ch check the summary of uh, linear regression. Okay. When you when you check those p values, you see that those confidence uh, interval confidence intervals they usually don't include zero. Okay. So when they travel zero, they get a large p value because that could be a, an irrelevant uh, feature. So again, translated to this problem, what you're getting is. So low, low p values means 
that there's a significantly difference, statistically difference between those two those two things that you are trying to measure. I, I hope that you know that that you know yeah. helps helps you know in, in, interpret all you know, these these things. Yeah. Of course, I think I was just looking at it a little no, bit not not because your p value is is low. That means that you have a good predictor, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't mean that. The only thing is that you know compared to some standard that you are hypothesizing, you know, you know hypothesis. That means that there's a low probability. Okay, so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, you use the uh, VC pred. Okay, so that that's VC pred, uh, and then take the stroke and the value. So take the those, max. Those are those are usually the numerical predictors. Okay, from the image. Yeah, the, they the are. Scan. There's no there's no yeah, risk yeah. Uh, ones in here. Right. The other ones are the, the factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, what about the one that um, it's very uh, so that, that there's not much difference within uh, the two, so the maximum, the minimum value. So there's not much variation. So that, that there is one within the box plot, which is like this this one here. Um, uh, the the you are you want to use your mouse to draw on the screen? I think you can do that. Annotate or whatever it is in Italian. Yeah. So Brando, you said that these plots are ordered by managing yeah, the values, right? Annotate. Um, there it is. They're ordered by the maximum predicted value. Okay. I guess. So, so for I'm example, thinking. if if you go to the left most. Okay, upper left most, and I, you know, I, I cannot read the p-value, but I guess it's very small, right? In that one. 0. 0.0001. Correct. Yeah, it's one so you thousand. can see in the box plot, you can see that there's a visual difference between the box plot at the left and the box plot at the right. So the p-value is telling, okay, this is significantly different. Let's take one that maybe is not that different. Let's take one, the second row, last column, right? Second row, uh, yeah. Even the third uh, row. The, the, the last row, second, second column, sorry. Second Which column, last row. Okay. Second column, last row. Yeah. This one. Uh, yeah, that one, exactly. Um, uh, what, what is the p-value there? Uh, one. One, okay. So that means, that, that, that means you know, that, that, that's the maximum. <laughs> you, you know, that, that's one of the maximums of, of a p-value, right? So if you see the box plot, you see that, that middle line in the box plot is not really that different, right? Yeah, the median. Okay, the, the median, exactly. You just not that different. So if you are comparing that, the median or the mean, okay, because the box plot doesn't give you the mean, uh, but you can see that they are very similar. So what happens is that the difference probably will be zero. Okay, there's a probability that the difference will be zero. So there's no difference. Mm -hmm. So translated to the prediction power of the, you know, of those features, of that feature, uh, the model won't, you know, distinguish between the response between those two groups. Okay, because you know there's really no difference between one group and the other. Does that help? Yeah, that that's that's uh, that's okay. Mm, uh, yeah, but. Uh, uh, Comparing to the null, so what do you want to see? what do you want to see, Federica? The, the, say, the plot okay. or yeah. So here, <clears throat> there's not uh, there is no difference between two models. It's one model that we we are looking. It at. is yeah. Sorry, I think I misspoke. I thought this was a comparison of two models. That's that's later actually. I okay. think that's where I got confused. Because uh, it's yes versus no in one model, not not two models. It's like because before and and after you were doing some comparison with the null model to to yeah. validate which which ones yeah. were more important than the null model. But yeah. this one so, is this so one is actually ordering by the p value. So you're comparing with the response, then the stroke. 
the stroke, yes and no. Yeah. You know, one group is no stroke and the other group is yes, they got one yeah. stroke, at, at least one. So yeah, and what, what, what you're seeing is that depending on that p-value, it gives you the difference between those two groups, then you can make an assertion, okay, these are the predictors that have most significant difference according to the response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're, they're organized by p-value. Yeah. Okay, but let me tell you, this is only one analysis. Okay, this is not the only one. This is only one analysis that they are bringing, the author is bringing. But there are other ones that could, you know, uh, shed some more light on these predictors. Maybe this one predictor in the p-value is very large, okay? But then in other model, it gives you, you know, some information uh, there, you know, in, in the interaction with other features. So that, that's why, you know, this is more like a discovery uh, process. You know, to to start, you know, analyzing different techniques, and then try to, you know, try to globalize. Okay, from what I see from this uh, algorithms, from this output, then I can conclude these are the ones that could be good predictors. Yeah, exactly. So we're trying to, <clears throat> we have these, all these features, I guess, and we want to reduce those number of features to ones that only really have an impact okay. or a useful impact. Yeah. So, for example, let's say that you use, uh, you know, you're using this, this this model, right? You know, the the, the p-value with the difference of the of the groups by stroke by the response. Then you can do recursive uh, uh, feature uh, elimination. You can do backward selection, forward selection, okay, and you know many others. Uh, once you get a panorama of which are the ones that repeat, you know, within those algorithms, then you can say for sure, okay, these are the features that are really, you know, important for that for this response. So we are on our way there. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> exactly. So um, uh, this figure, I don't know what happened, but uh, it's a it's a ROC curve for max remodeling ratio which is this second one, which has a very, very low p-value as well. Maybe they just got out of order because of some, some I don't know why. Uh, maybe they, he resampled or did something differently uh, down the road. But when you look at this curve, it's actually upside down. Uh, it's, in, it's inverted okay, from the, I mean, the uh, book. You, you need to change, that. that's a silly thing. Uh, because in the prediction, when, when you calculate the, the rock curve here, that you you just need to uh, change the the predictor. So because you when you calculate the rock curve, you have the truth values and the uh, and one of the predictions. Okay, so you need to choose the other one. You need to change stroke and stroke train. Change the position of those or. Which one is the, the truth? Well, this is the input model. Uh, th this is the this is how you compute the rock curve. So you okay. give it you give it the data set, the training data set. You give it the stroke, and you give it the the variable that you want to uh, compare the, or do that against. And okay. then the GG but, plot is one yeah. minus specificity, and Y is sensitivity. Yeah, that's that's correct. So what I if you put a, a minus? There's one minus specificity in the in the no, thing. In the, in the, or, or reverse the in in the this max remodeling ratio. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Where, where is the the data set? Where you stroke stroke train? Okay. Uh, if we do. Ah. Thought I had it. Looks like that. Okay, so we have some. Uh, um, uh, so this is I mean, the max remodeling. Rat. It's just it's one of the predictors, right? Yeah, you need to, to grab the other one. Grab what other one? Uh, Stroke. No, another one because it's max. Uh, what what did you predict, basically? 
Oh, in the in the graph, in the graph, it's uh... yeah, in the model. In the, the, the you you have this here in this data set. You have a uh... there's max remodeling ratio, and there's max yeah, max I... max wall thickness. It's another one, basically. Uh... Why is that? Uh, because in the book, uh, it, that doesn't he say? Um, Remodeling max remodeling ratio. So, did you take the max remodeling ratio? Uh -huh. right? Yep. Yeah. This so, is his. This is his code from the GitHub. So, I I I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's uh, it's inverted for some reason. Hmm. No, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. It's just that it's on the other. Uh, it's reversed. So, if if you do reverse, um. Uh, <laughs> <That's not good. laughs> yeah well i don't want to spend too much time on it there, yeah, anyway the the idea is that there's a there's an roc curve and you can look at that for each one of the uh each one of these variables that matters the most and those sorts of things but when we talk about the overall complexity of this model each of the individual models is not that complex. It doesn't it doesn't take into account multiple multiple predictors and those sorts of things, and it doesn't take it doesn't take into account the interaction of those those predictors as well. And that was kind of the next section where we're uh, we're looking at kind of the interactions between things, and that's what this plot comes from. So what they do is they create the they create a a, a data frame that has all of the uh, all of the predictors. There's 171 of them times all the other ones um, and then you run those model you run you run models where you have uh, you take into account this is probably where I got confused earlier so you're taking into account a model that has just the predictors so just uh, calc volume plus calc volume prop if you were to write it in a LM format Mm -hmm. And if you do stroke to squared, this is actually what it does is it takes calc volume plus calc volume prop plus the interaction term. Um, and, and it compares those two models. Uh -huh. that, that's and then, yeah. Yeah. That's and then and then you end up with uh, you can filter that using this. Uh, uh, this the output of this of this data set is is this and you can filter those pairs uh, for the things that matter the most. So here they've eliminated by an ROC more than 0.5 and a p-value less than 0 .02, 0 0.2, um, which is very permissive, uh, I think. And then you have these, these interaction factors. Um, and that's what this, this plot is here in the book. It's a plotly plot, so it's interactive. You can hover over it and get an idea of the contribution to ROC value and what two variable interaction is is deriving that um, improvement in terms of the predicted. I think that's prediction power improvement, but I'm not entirely sure. So that's what this code is here. You have the GG plotly, um, and then that gets put into the data set. This 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 figure down here, they're talking about. Uh, a slightly they're talking about looking at one particular variable so again they're looking at max remodeling ratio by max stenosis ratio or area uh, sorry it's not a ratio it's an area and they look into that but this figure is not in the code um, and there's actually a github issue for it uh, so i don't know how to derive this 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 figure but uh Effectively, it's the same as the other big one with all of the plots, and it's saying that the the yes and the no again back to uh, back to what Ricardo was saying. You know, the the median values are clearly different for these. There is predictive power in this particular interaction, and um, and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, I've okay. seen this plot here. Yeah. The the, first the, the one curve, the contour one. Yeah. 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 Uh, but now I don't I don't uh, actually recall it. Uh, there's um, a quite uh, uh, you can do differently within different models to obtain this uh, curve uh, like like uh, um, they they are like John smooth. Uh huh. So group it by some uh, variables. So or something. Yeah. 
it looks cool. I'm not sure I know how to interpret it fully, but uh, um, but yeah. So there there is some predictive power in that interaction effect. And then here, and then the next the next one is the one where there's one really nice big plot, but there is there are lines and lines and lines and lines and lines of code because they're doing what they're doing is they're they're running a bunch of different models. And they're using this RFE function, which is a mm -hmm. recursive feature elimination. And it's in the caret package. And they're running them on uh, the risk predictors only. So the one zero traits, um, uh, imaging predictors. So those are the image analysis outputs. And then they're running them combined. Um, and then they're looking at the ROC curves, the, uh, of 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 all of those models, as you eliminate uh, variables that don't matter, um, I think the most the most interesting one is actually the imaging predictors here in the where they're not filtering. So the the difference between filter and no filter is they are doing that step that I showed you earlier, where they um, now I can't find one. <laughs> They're filtering out uh, things that uh, are correlated, I believe. So you can see they're doing centering, scaling, you know, Johnson. They're getting rid of zero variance variables and those sorts of things as well. Um, and then, you, you, Johnson? This um, it's, that, it's that normality correction. Uh, the normality correction, yeah. If that's the right term. Um, and then, and then this this RFE function is going through each of the variables and picking okay, step, step step normalize. What is it? step normalize? Oh, is it like step I normalize? I think I'm so. Not, no, um, uh, step no, normalize no. is the combination of step center and step scale. That's okay. step uh -huh. normalize. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now, you know, Johnson is a transformation. It's not scaling. It's transformation. Okay. It's like a log transformation. Yeah, okay. You know, you're transforming those numbers, okay, uh -huh. to a different, you know, to, to yeah, a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, had, scaling, I had the. Uh, scaling, yeah. what, what are you, what, what are you, you're maintaining the distances of those numbers, but then you are starting from, you know, an arbitrary number, zero to one or negative minus three to yeah, three, yeah. et cetera. Okay. So, I don't, I don't know the guts of the RFE uh, function very at all. Um, but effectively, you're putting, you're putting in the recipe that has been that has all your steps to clean up. There's a filter step, and there's a and, and there's ones that have been filtered for correlation, and there's ones that, um, there's ones that have not. Um, I, actually, I'm I think I'm misspeaking because actually, filter versus not, I believe, is this interaction term where we're filtering based upon the interaction effects, the 18 rows. This is where I got really confused because like these things aren't named very well, I don't think. But it doesn't really, it doesn't matter too much. Just know that they're processed slightly differently and there's, and you can see all of the filtering, the correlation filtering, and you can see whether or not you're taking into all predictors, imaging predictors or risk predictors and the feature elimination, I think you read it from right to left. And so you have uh, uh, in the light purple, the lavender one, you have all the interaction effects. And that's why there's so many more than just the base main effects because you, you, there literally are, there are 171, but we're, we've curled, curtailed those down based upon correlation and all that stuff, getting rid of zero variance as well. Um, and so there's not 171 that go in uh, into the start of the of the RFE function, and you can see that as the, as you go along um, and you reduce the variables, in many cases the 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 ROC goes up um, at to a to a certain extent, and then once once it gets to you start reducing important variables, the ROC drops massively. Um, it's not always the case. You can see that the ROC goes back up in the case of just the risk risk predictors. I wonder if that's a, a function of the uh, type of variables that they are, because they're binary, they're yes or no sorts of traits. Um, 
and and maybe there's some structure there that messes with the model or something like that or or you literally have one extremely important variable um i don't know if i explained that very well but i think uh you, you, did, you did very good very good just uh, uh, the 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 order of the steps did you find any difficulties because it changes if you put like step zero variance on uh, uh, like on top yeah. and then you yeah, yeah? I forget where it is, and it might have been in a tidy models book, not here, but I remember reading that, that the order yeah. of these recipe steps matters a ton. I don't know exactly. I didn't try to reorder them and test that either. I didn't, I didn't have time for that, but yeah. uh, but I think it's it's something that would be really interesting to try. Like, do you do zero variants on the variable before they're transformed, or do you do them after they're transformed? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, it's so, somewhere. Like yeah. Yeah, so someone in the tiny models, uh, there's a, there's a guide, there's a guideline on what kind of steps you should be, you know, the order of the steps that you should be doing. What I believe that one, one is imputing, the other is a transformation, etc. So yeah. so what happens is that you know once you do that that step, the other steps you know won't uh, you know won't undo any work that you have done on the previous the previous one. Yeah, yeah, it's like the die divert when you do like that. Yeah, but definitely the other the steps is very yeah. important, you know, for, for the recipes, very important. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you do correlation, for example, then you filtered some uh, predictors. So you, you just eliminated some predictor that goes, they have, uh, for example, correlation greater than a certain threshold that you specified. Then, if if you recall the, those predictors, it, it, it throws you an error because the, the, that predictor is not there anymore. So you know oh, that in terms of in terms of calling it by its name. Yeah, for example, if you want to do an interaction yeah. with that term after yeah. having done correlation, that term is is not there anymore. Oh, yeah. I, I just I remember when they were talking about some of the functions that instead of calling when you start doing the 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 feature elimination stuff in recipes that you should not use the never never use the names directly just use uh, either a list of names which is what they've done here in many cases uh -huh. uh, it's not a list sorry it's just a vector of, of characters um and um and um and then feed that into uh either all of or any of or one of, not not one of, all of or any of, depending on how strict you want to be, and uh, it will uh, it will select those columns and do the transformation on those only, and you won't run into those errors. But they talked about that a lot, about how you start reducing, eliminating features uh, and predictors, and you're you start running into trouble when you use their names explicitly. Um, just real quick, one one kind of last thing is that what they did was they uh, they took one of these um, one of these things and they they just for the imaging uh, uh, data and they made this table at the end where they're saying out of all of these models these these variables were selected you know at least 24 times and then they're going to put those into the final model and then they say hey why don't you go ahead and run the final model I didn't have time for that. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but but you have all the script and you have uh, uh, the, the the source data is in the FES uh, repository, um, and and uh, feel free to uh, maybe I'll try and make a post a little bit after this session and and uh, let you know what that looks like. But uh, but he gives some he gives some outputs of those things there at the bottom. But like I said, the, the point of this, this uh, I think the point of this chapter was to just kind of go through all the steps, show some of the process, show some of the functions as well in the background. And, uh, and I learned a lot by trying to teach it to others. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't do too bad of a job and y'all got something out of it today. But um, I think, you know, they say it throughout the chapters, like, oh, we talk about this more in chapter eight. We talk about this more in chapter three. Right. We talk about this more in chapter five. So I think the, this is the skeleton version and the meat and bones is uh, coming up. Thank you very much. Sure. So, yeah, great. Good job. job. Good job, Brandon.
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I also included the link of the, the Tidy Models uh, article that talks about the ordering of recipes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, sometimes you can change, you know, depending on the situation, right? Sometimes you can change, but this is, you know, that, that's the proposed uh, plan that you should be following. Did Max follow it? I haven't read it yet. Did Max follow uh, it? That's what I want to know. I don't know. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know because, you know, he put the, the zero yeah. variance uh, recipe at the, at the bottom. And yeah. sometimes I've seen at the, at the top. So it's kind of a situational, you know, thing. I mean, you have to experiment with these things. So, <laughs> by the way, Brandon, I like your background. Oh yeah, I, I found that I, they, oh, they Bob, man. Zoom Zoom came up yeah. and it was like, "Hey, would you like a virtual background?" And I'm like, "Okay, oh, I could yeah. be in bikini bottom." I know. <laughs> yeah, the, the shirt combines on everything. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, I'm, right? You, you, oh, I guess I... you'll. See, You'll see Hawaiian shirts a lot on because we'll we'll be on Fridays because that's my. I do a professional background. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. So we we end this chapter in one session. Is that right? I think so. Unless that's there's any it. questions, I I have to let you know. I'll be I'll be out next week. It's um it's a it's the weekend the long weekend here. Um I'm gonna be heading out. Friday Global earlier, day. so I'll, yeah, I won't make it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll catch up by video or whatever y'all want to do. Okay, maybe we we just can uh, have a break and start the, the 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 following week. Maybe I don't know if you agree. Uh, I mean, it works for me, but I don't want to dictate others. Yeah, because I don't see anyone else signing up for uh, for the for chapter three yet, at least. So this is just one session. We can even do like a sort of break for the next week. And then we start back on the ninth. So Ricardo, you are going to, uh, on the following week. I'm doing, I'm doing chapter four. Yeah. But so you wanna, we... you wanna push it back a week and, uh, or do you wanna go ahead and do chapter four before three? No, 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 no. So I'm, I'm just saying that uh, Ricardo go, uh, is going to is going to present on the 16th instead of the 9th. Okay, the 16th, I'm not going to be here. Okay, so great. If, if, if it's not the 9th, then it will be after the 16th. Okay, so yeah. we can skip the next week then. Uh, okay, so we keep going. And uh, someone else will, uh, uh, if any, maybe Ben, would you like to join us with, uh, with chapter three, maybe? Uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm looking through chapter three right now. Really? I haven't, okay. you know, I haven't presented in a lot of these. I haven't done a lot of book clubs, so I'm just not sure how well I'll do, but um, I can give it a try. It doesn't seem too difficult. Me neither. I ask a lot of stupid <laughs> questions too, so uh, uh, be prepared. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Brandon. That was precious uh, help going right. through this chapter. Yeah, and the code, which is like time consuming. And so we had like, we, we know how to make the plot now. Um, so next week will be Ben and then Ricardo. Thank you very much, everyone. See you so, next week. Sorry, okay. just to just to yeah. clarify, we are going um oh, September second or the ninth. So uh, chapter three in the is the second. On the second chapter three is the second, and then we'll do chapter four the ninth. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. See you next week. Take Bye, care. Everyone. Have a nice weekend. Bye.